Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Lock of the Figures. And you're not rocking with your boy, Major Wala. And today, in this episode, I got a banger for y'all. Now, it's probably a lot of people out there that are single key. You always wanted a big brother in your life, right? Everybody want a companion, a big brother, an older sibling, someone that you can call on when someone is taking advantage of you. Guess what? In this video today, I'm going to show you who your big brother is and how your big brother is looking out for you and you don't even know it. So, stay tuned. It's motivation. Suck, suck, get on your job. If you hate, get on your job. You can look me in my eyes, see I'm ready for whatever. Anything don't kill me, make me better. Okay, welcome back. Now, you didn't know that you have a big brother, but I'm here to tell you that you do. You got a big brother. The big brother is making sure that no one takes advantage of you. You have a lot of people that use the term burrows. You got the credit burrows, but they're like actors. They're playing a role and we just take it very serious, the role that they play. But there's another burrow and I'm not talking about the FBI because that's the other one. But the second burrow is guess who? The CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. This is the bureau that makes sure that no one is taking advantage of you throughout any consumer credit transaction. So you ask, how are they looking out for you? But if you never heard of them, trust me. That's why you're hearing about it today on this video. So I'm going to teach you all about the CFPB and how you can use them to your advantage to defend yourself against those elaborate mechanisms, those so-called bureaus. So, we're going to go over what the CFPB is, how can we use it, what type of information can you find there, and, and how can you file a complaint with the CFPB. You file a complaint when someone has done something wrong to you, and you see that they're not answering you, so they're not taking your complaint serious. They're sending you star letter after star letter after star letter. Guess what? That's not right. And they know it's not right, but they know that you don't know how to defend yourself. So in this video today, I'm going to show you all about how you can use the CFPB to defend yourself against those pesky credit elaborate mechanisms. They almost got me. According to the federal government, there's only two bureaus. That's the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Now, you know, you're not an FBI agent, right? Okay, those are the agents for the FBI. Guess who's the agent for the CFPB? Anyone? Anyone? You got it. You are. You are the agent. So, they can't defend you if they doesn't know that you're being taken advantage of. So, it's up to you to get their attention to say, hey, I'm being taken advantage of. I need y'all to come help me. That's the only way that they know is because we are the agents for the CFPB. Every consumer credit transaction that happens, or guess who? who's the original creditor of every consumer credit transaction? You right again. You. We are. We are the original creditor. Without us, nothing can be formed. So before you even walk into that, that company, you are an original creditor just walking around. So. I always remember that. Keep that in the back of your head. Okay, so you're not going to be the only one that is complaining to the CFPB. It says it right here. Look what it says. You go right here to the submit a complaint. Look, each week we send more than 10,000 complaints about financial products and services to companies for response. If other agencies would be better able to assist, we'll send it to them and let you know. Most companies respond within 15 days. And when CLPB send them letters, guess what? They're going to respond because they know that it's the federal government that's want to know what's going on. So they're going to get to the bottom of what happened with that account. So you come down here. You can see find some answers before you start a complaint. What are they currently accepting complaints about? Basically, checking and savings account. If you're into check systems, if you have accounts that you've been denied for bank account and you see seen something that's on your account that looks fraudulent, that's not you or it's outdated, come to CLPB with that account and submit your complaint to them and they'll get that settled. They also dealing with 
credit card, credit repair services, you can come here and actually report them to the CFPB also. See, if you got any problem with your credit report and other personal consumer report, or uh, debt collection, debt settlement, money transfer, virtual currency, and money services, mortgages, payday loans, personal loans, prepaid cards, student loans, and vehicle loans, and lease. If you got any situations where you felt like you was taken advantage of and someone did not do right about it, you know you can come to the CFBP and get it all settled and all taken care of. See, what can you do before submitting the complaint? Have you tried reaching out to the company? Companies can usually answer questions unique to your situation and more specific to the products and services they offer. Now, when you're dealing with the CFPB, like you want to use the CFPB as your last resort, like you've been trying to deal with them the correct way and be civil about it. You're trying to be a civilized individual, but they are not handling you with urgency like you want them to be handling you with. That's when you come to Big Brother and let Big Brother deals with them. If they're not dealing with you the correct way, maybe if you tell your Big Brother, they're going to have to deal with him the correct way. Okay, what is the most important for me to include in the complaint? We're going to fill out a complaint here in this video. So you're going to know what you need to include in the complaint before you submit it. But let's look and see. Generally, you can't submit a second complaint about the same problem. So include this information to help the company respond to your complaint. So you want to make sure that you got all the necessary information you need in that first complaint that you submit. Because if you start submitting more than one complaint, nine times out of ten, you just starting the process over each time. So you're never getting no further along in the process. Key facts in your own word. Be clear and concise about the problem you're having. Okay, so you want to make sure if you have an issue, when you filling out the complaint, make sure you go in depth about what the issue is that you're having with each company. Include only the most important date amount communications you had with the company if you reached out to them and if you got records of phone calls that you had with them trying to solve this or if you got correspondence that you sent through the mail every letter that you ever send to a debt collector make sure you get a green return receipt hold on i might have one somewhere around here one of these you want to make sure when you go send it out you want to get one of these with every letter that you send. And it's important that you pay that extra money because this is basically putting timestamps on everything. It's, it's starting the process so you'll know when to start your counting down of your 30-day cycle When because you're going to know once they receive your letter. If you don't got a receipt of when they receive, you don't know how to start the process. Okay? So make sure you have the green return receipts so the most important dates amounts and communications every communication need to be done over the mail documents attach documents that support the fact like account statements communication that's your correspondence limited 50 pages so when you file a complaint it's going to give you a chance to scan all your documents and upload it to the CFPB complaint that you fill out what company you're complaining about select the company from the list in the form we will forward the complaint directly to this company and ask for a response just like i said you using the cfpb as a big brother they didn't respond to you right and you have things to do and you need someone to be done this with urgency so you send it to Big Brother, and Big Brother is going to make them respond. It's no longer a 30 day cycle no more. They have 30 days to respond to you. They got 15 days to respond to the CLPB. So you're cutting your time in half because you've been dealing with this problem for long enough. If you don't see the company provide complete contact information, and you know where you can get the contact information? If you pull your credit report, every account that's listed on your credit report is at the bottom of your credit report, the very last page. There's a list of addresses and names. If any of that information is invalid, just say you go to the last page of your credit report. This page right here, and you have all these names and addresses of places that has put something on your credit report, okay? That address has to be right. If that address is wrong, that is a violation. So, how you know if, that, if it's wrong or right, once you send that letter out, and then if you get that letter back in the mail, 
that says sender not available anything like that is listed on that letter that means invalid address or anything's invalid names you want to take a photocopy and print that out get that because that's going to be part of your complaint also because now they gave you a wrong address so now you can't correspond with them because they, they are putting out fraudulent information so you want to make sure you get a copy of that and that's going to be part of the co complaint also okay next you want to try to put your contact information you will need to provide your full name full mailing address and email address you're going to see you're going to basically have to open up an account with the CFPB and you're going to need an e email address to do so without this the company won't be able to respond to your complaint okay you also need to provide your phone number if you are submitting for someone else you must identify yourself and your relationship to them so most likely if you're doing this for yourself or if you're doing it for someone else because Experian they have the tendency to look at your IP address and if that IP address is not matching up the home address of the person that you complaining about they're going to send you a letter saying that they afraid that this isn't you sending this complaint so you either want to get a VPN when you're doing it or Make sure that you have the correct addresses for everyone that's matching the IP address that you're sending the complaint from. How does the CLPB share my complaint data? So they're going to share it with the company. That's one person. If we can't send the complaint to the company for a response, we'll send to another federal agency and let them know they're going to send either the, the BBB or the other FTC. We publish complaint data. That can go look and see how other people submitted complaints. And some of them you can see what the response was, but some of them you can't. It's all about if you are allowing the response to be seen. That's how you know if it's a non disclosure agreement is listed within the response because sometimes these companies owe you money. And if they send response back and is honoring your request and they pay you off, most times they send non-disclosure agreements because they don't want you to tell someone that they settled with you because now that'll be bad for business because you're not the only one that they gave that contract to that's part of the business and most people they just want the debt settled so most people honor that request okay so now since we've got to the place where we can start submitting their complaint now you go through the list of what you submit the complaint for choose the product or services that best match your complaint if you complain about a mortgage payday loan student loan vehicle loan at least checking a savings account if you're trying to send a complaint about equifax transunion and Experian, you're going to go right here to credit and reporting okay when you click that bubble it gives you a next list of uh, options to pick from so now what type of credit report product are you picking from just say credit reporting that would be equal fast transunion and Experian. if you sent them a letter trying to dispute anything on your credit report that's the bubble that you're trying to do but if just say if you're dealing with a credit repair company that you feel took advantage of you you're going to click on that one for video purpose only we're going to click on credit reporting then you're going to come down here to click next to submit this complaint it's only five simple steps this complaint is so important and most fraudulent accounts that's on your your credit profile it can get those the accounts deleted it's kind of a blessing <laughs> okay what type of problem are you having most of the credit reporting complaints we get are about one of the following topics select the one that's best describe your complaint you will have the chance to explain your complaint in detail on the next step in step three so let's go through all of them incorrect information on your report i mean wrong address fraud incorrectly shows account still open anything problem with credit reporting company investigation into your existing problem just say if you sent it in to them and they just are stalling they send you style letters and what a style letter look like is basically them saying they don't believe that this is you submitting a complaint if they have stole your identity why would they be sending letters in trying to delete something from your account if anything they would be trying to add more fraudulent 
accounts to your profile. So when those elaborate mechanisms, seeing those letters, those are style tactics to discourage you, to make you think that the process don't work. But we're here to tell you that it do work. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how well this process works. Okay. And proper use of your report. Share without consent, credit inquiries from unknown sources, unable to get a credit report or a credit score, or credit monitoring or identity theft protection services, billing dispute, unwanted marketing, problem canceling account. If you had any one of those problems, you're going to click on that. Problem with fraud alerts or security freezes. Okay, so what we're going to go through right here. We're going to say having a problem with, with the elaborate mechanism. What best describes your problem? Okay. See, normally you can click on investigation took more than 30 days. But with being after COVID and, you know, they giving people a lot of leeway for us to time it because a lot of companies are saying that they have minimal workers on staff. So things are taking a lot more time to get done. We know that that's a lie, but that's not a good thing option to choose anymore because they're giving them at least 45 to 60 days to handle one account but the law still says 30 so if it ever takes over 30 days by law you can press the issue because federal law says they only have 30 days to send you a response for this issue okay was not notified of investigation status or results okay their investigation did not fix an error on your report. So they did an investigation and they come back and they still allowing the company to report that wrong information. That's a nice one to pick right there too. Difficult submitting a dispute or getting information about a dispute over the phone. Problem with personal statements of dispute. Explaining why you disagree with the lender's decisions after investigation. So just say they did the investigation but you're not happy with the terms of the investigation you'll come in you'll click this bubble right here now clpb will make them start a whole new investigation for video purposes we're going to go right here was not notified with investigation or results okay have you tried to fix this problem with the company already before you came to the clpb yes we here that's why we're here now Okay, last result, we come to big brother. So we go to the next. Okay, this box right here is not like Twitter. You got a lot more characters that you can play with. So you want to make sure that you describe exactly what happens for video purposes only. I have a quote that I normally put in here. I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to copy and paste it. Just copy and paste it right here. Correct the space and then make sure you put a date right here. And normally it is, don't put today's date. Make sure that that date is at least over 30 days old. Perfectly open 45 days, okay? If you can check in my other video right here, or right here, oh, right here. <laughs> you can check this video, and this is video is everything you need to know about the Equifax data breach, because a lot of people is affected by this data breach. So Equifax may have things on your report that shouldn't be there, okay? So, but you can use this term with all three boroughs because once one borough reports something, the next might report it. So you can keep it in there for all three boroughs. So right here, this is the statement I was telling you about. Remember I was saying about the non-disclosure agreements? Right here, learn how it works. Okay, you can click that or not. We gonna click it, just in case, just for video purposes. Now you come down here, what will be fair resolution for this issue? Okay, so you, since you've been dealing with this for over 60 days, okay? 60 days. You can come back up here right here and copy paste this. This line right here. You're gonna copy paste this line right there. Oh, you demand that these accounts be deleted immediately or you will file litigation due to the stress they cause you. So right here, all the information you have, the correspondence, your ID, social security card, proof of address, any information that you have proving your claims, you want to scan it and upload it. You can upload to up to 50 documents right here in this section right here. So you want to make sure that you have all the information. The more information that you got proven your legitimate problem, the more chances you got to get it deleted. 
So you click on it and it's simple. You just go through, find them, find a file. Just say you want to upload this document. You upload that document. Give it a second. It uploads the document. Now you come down here. You go to next. Okay. So right here you want to put the company name. The first company name. You can put all three bureaus. Okay. So you put Equifax. It's going to pop up. It's going to pop up the actual thing. So look on your credit report to make sure that you have sent it to the right section of Equifax. Whatever address that you sent all your documents to, you want to find that name and put it in this box right here. We need this information to help find you in their system. So we're going to go on the last four. Do you want to listen about another company? Yes. So now we are going to TransUnion. It's going to pop up. You're going to click on their name. You want to one more because we got to make we get the trifecta experience. So now come right here. You're going to click next. So now it's going to bring you to this page. So you're going to come and you're going to put all your information in. It says optional, but the more information you can put in here, the better. So put an email address in there. I'm the email address because that's how CLPB is going to correspond with you because they want it done quickly. So they're not going to do it through the mails. They're going to respond to you through email. So you want to have an email that's going to show up on your phone so you can access it because they might send you a message saying that they need more information. And the quicker you get that to them, the quicker you can get your claim solved. You can save your information. So you won't have to put it in the next time. You can click right there and save it. So you can go through a review. And it's going to review everything and come up with a whole little claim. So now you got the claim right here. When you're going to come, you're going to verify and make sure all your information is correct. Everything is the way you like it. Make sure you got all your documents uploaded within there. And you're going to come in and you're going to authorize both of these boxes. Click, click. Check both of them. Then you're going to come down right here and you're going to submit it. It's going to take no more than two to three days. And the CLPB is going to reach out to you saying that they are starting the investigation. Once they start the investigation, they'll let you know if they need any other documents, that any other further information from you. You send them that information to keep the process moving along. Now, the CLPB is going to solve that complaint. Whatever that issue is, it's going to get solved. Rather, if that inquiries, negative accounts, bad accounts, outdated accounts, wrong information, misspelling the names, any type of thing that you you can make a complaint about, they're going to get it resolved. And I told you all y'all stay around. I'm going to show you all how it works. Stand by. Okay. This was the client that I have. If you can see, these are a list of inquiries. You see, that's the inquiry page for uh, a credit profile for a client that I have. All of these are inquiries. OK, but this is the updated credit report. These see inquiries. Now, these are the list of inquiries. The CLPB was the reason that I got all these inquiries out that client's report. And the good thing when you're doing a CLP a CLP a CFPB <laughs> report of inquiries, you can list all of them on one report. So there you have it. That was another episode of Likeable Figures. I hope y'all got something out this video. I hope that if you have any questions about the CFPB and anything that I didn't explain in this video, you can ask it down in the comments. Once I see your comment, I'll answer to the best of my ability. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. This channel is all about seeing the American consumer do better and be better. My name is Major Wala, and I guess I'll holler at y'all on the next one. Peace.